back here from the Richard Schwartz and Associates Studios. Tanner Marler alongside Cody Blazak. And it's time, Cody. We talk about it every week. We've been looking forward to this one for a while. These two weeks, back-to-back here, we got Kamario Taylor last week, best quarterback in the state. Now we get Caleb Cunningham, by far and away, by the metrics, the best receiver in the state. I'm not sure if I was more excited last week or if I'm more excited this week. I'm not sure either. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure either. It's, it's, it's against two really good teams. And it's that's not, the thing we, is we we're supposed, it should be a good play. game. Yes. Like, yeah. they're not playing any kind of scrub. They're playing East Webster, who, again, we talked about a little bit ago, but let's go ahead and dive a little deeper into this East Webster schedule. They're 5-0. and oh. I mean, they've got a uh, they've got some big wins too. They start out against Uport, thirty five to six, um, beat Nanawaya forty one to six, beat Noxapater fifty four to nothing, beat Baldwin, who's a really good two A team, who we've seen play fifty five to six, and beat Calhoun City twenty to twelve. But Calhoun City is really the outlier because they've scored more than thirty five points in every single game. It's it's they ain't no scrubs. No, they're not. My thing is, are we going to see in back-to-back weeks the teams knock off undefeated teams? I mean, are potentially. We? Very. I mean, the potential is there. Don't get me wrong. Choctaw County, 4-1. and one. Not the greatest competition. Well, they lose, but, but that game one is against a fantastic Park Lane Academy And team. it was game one. Yeah, and it was a one-point loss. One point. So take that with what you will. I'm super excited. And let's not – And Choctaw County has played good competition. They played Winona, defending 3A state champions, beat them 35-21, to 21, and that Winona defense is legit. And so is the Ripley defense. They, well, they've been a bit off this year, and we know that. The Ripley offense has been bad. Correct. The Ripley the defense de- I, I is just solid. I don't think the defense has been as good as years past. No, either. no. They're not one of these still Ripley defenses good. that are going to carry them to the second or third round. That's they're my point. They're still good. Yeah, it's just not what, we're, not what we're accustomed to seeing from Ripley. No, no. But Caleb Cunningham, obviously, Alabama commit, was committed to Mississippi State. Is now not. Is now not. I'm excited. Oh, I'm excited, too. We I'm get- excited. Best quarterback, now best receiver. I mean, back-to-back weeks. And and then these are the the two best seniors in the state, I think. Uh, There are some really good players down south. Uh, The Oak Grove quarterback's fantastic, and there are some other really good players. But as far as our coverage area goes, by far the best two seniors we've got. In the the coming weeks, we get Kosciuszko, who's got some of the best underclassmen in the state. We've got a lot of good games coming our way. We do. We do. But as for this week, I just I, – I, I look at who Choctaw County's played, and I look at that and I say that is a better non-divisional schedule than East Webster's. A lot better. A defending 3A state champions on there, a really good 4A defense in Ripley – New Hope, take that with what you will. But out of the sa- – and Park Lane, of course, solid. Out of the sample size, I think Calhoun – or not Calhoun, I think Choctaw is more battle-tested. And I think for that reason, they're my pick going into this one. And, and also remember, this is – for for both teams, this is division. game one division. Yeah, game one or division I point. mean, this is a big game. It's not just a, another non-division game. Yeah. And, yeah, I think I'm going to go with you. I'm taking Choctaw as well. Well, and there's going to be two very different styles of play here. Obviously, Choctaw is going to air that thing out. But East Webster... Why would you not? Yeah, exactly. You got the number one receiver in the state. I mean, there is literally... There's not a good reason. There is no excuse that you should not just throw the ball as many times as you can and see what he comes down with. This is fair. But East Webster... They're going to spread it out. I mean, I, I'm looking here at stats. Dagan Crowley's averaging as near as makes no difference, 50 receiving yards a game. R.T. Moy with 20. Brennis Cork with 10. They can throw it a little bit, but the rushing numbers are what really stand out. D. Bingham's averaging 73 a game. Uh, Dakari Coffey's averaging 44 a game. R.T. Moy uh, averaging 31 a game. And D. Bingham has him 12 total touchdowns on the year. That's a lot. Not, not too shabby. That's a lot. But they're, 
they're going to spread it out, man. They're going to spread it out. I, I really, I mean, I agree. The thing is, in the end, I'm not sure it's going to matter. I mean, I agree because, again, I think I just think that the star power is going to be tough to deal with. Yeah, exactly. That's, I mean, it is tough to take on one of the best players in the state, especially at his caliber. I mean, we'll, we'll see, but I have a feeling Caleb Cunningham is going to have himself a, a, a mighty fine game and a mighty fine senior year. Agreed. Um, for East Webster, obviously Cunningham, the one to look out for East Webster. I'm looking square at Dagan Crowley as part, uh, for this East Webster game or East Webster team. I'm looking at stats right now, Cody. Would you like to guess what his numbers are? Tell me. I'm about to pull them up. It hit him. All-purpose yards for uh, Mr. Crowley. 106 rush yards. 238 receiving yards. 142 kick return yards. 94 punt return yards. 20 interception return yards for a total of 600 all-purpose yards on the season. He leads the team in yard in all-purpose yards per game. So, D. Bingham going to be the guy you give it to to punch it in the end zone. Crowley's going to be the, be the guy to get you there for East Webster. Uh, yeah, agreed. I mean, what we have is a really good game coming up, to make it very simple. And we might both have Choctaw, but we very well could be underestimating this East Webster team. I, I don't think East Webster – I think Choctaw wins. I don't think East Webster goes down without a fight. No, I agree. I don't think this is going to be a, a, a 20, 30-point game. I, no. I'm thinking somewhat similar to what we saw last week where Louisville was always like in it, but they weren't really in it, except East Webster will be in it. That's fair. I don't I – don't, that sentence doesn't compute to me, but that's fair. Well, the I score, like what you're saying. <laughs> the score was only one or two possessions, but Louisville couldn't do anything. I think yeah. East Webster is going to be able to do something. I think, late gonna in be the able, game. I think they're going to be able to move the ball. Yeah, exactly. I think they're Louisville really going to be able to move the ball. It's it's going to be a good one. I'm excited. Two really excited killer games back to back weeks. Gosh, you're telling me. Next week we get your favorite team. I won't even be here. I know, but we do get your favorite team. You get to see the Braves. Early pick. Who do you have for? Your team next week. Oh, Tish, if they play in Ripley. I got Tish if they're playing Ripley because Tish can score. K- Tish can score. Ripley cannot. Um, but for this week, we've both said we got Choctaw County. Score prediction. I'm going to go in the realm of 30. We'll go 35. 35-31. See, I'm going a little higher score. I'm going 42, 35. Cool. I think I think this is going to be a close game. I really do, and I'm excited. It is going to. The hope is that we get something like we did last week. This is true. This is true. That's about all the time we've got here on this week's episode. As always, thank you so much for watching, listening. That's all for this week's edition of the Magnolia Fields Podcast. We'll catch you next time. Next time, excuse me, from the Richard Schwartz and Associates Studios.